Toward the end of summer 2017, at around 11.30 p.m., I found myself hefting heavy boxes into a storage unit that had miraculously just become available that day. I had married a man 12 days prior who decided that he just couldn't fake it anymore. I left a few boxes of heavy red wheat in his home from my food storage, had my grand piano moved back to my parents' home temporarily, and put my trust in God that he would help me find another teaching position and a place to live. Although my 12, almost 13-year-old son Isaac was sad that his mom would be back in the single world, he was kind of happy that he'd be back with his friends and going to the same school that he had gone to before. This wasn't my first rodeo in the divorce arena and I was bound and determined to do it differently. I wasn't gonna let it tear me up inside emotionally and mentally like I did the first time. Prayers were answered in only ways that God can orchestrate. A teaching position opened mid-August just 12 miles from our city. My dad helped find us a little home that was perfect, which we were able to fix up, and I used savings to get new carpet and paint and shutters and flooring and paint the cabinets, and it was just brand new. My son was super excited to be living in a new home. The carpet and wood flooring had just been laid. I had a pretty good job. My son Isaac was enjoying cross country, ballroom dance, and student government, we were gonna be okay. The last week of September, I picked Isaac up from cross country practice. The full-time missionaries were having dinner at grandpa and grandma's house where we were temporarily staying mid-move. We ate dinner with them and then afterwards they shared a message with us and then asked Isaac to say the closing prayer. They kept telling him, you're gonna be a missionary soon, you need to prepare. And little did we know that in less than 24 hours, he would begin his service as a missionary on the other side of the veil. It was a beautiful September day. I remember it being not too cold and not too hot. I was starting to get a cold, which I blame on both the seasons and stress. I dropped Isaac off at school and watched as he proudly strolled into school with a giant beehive he and grandma had collected for extra credit in science class. I told him he had plenty of extra credit from his insect collection, but he wanted to take it today, as if tomorrow would never come. Our goodbye was nothing special. I went to school and taught and enjoyed my day with fourth graders. I had been working late most days but decided to come home early that day. I pulled in the driveway and wandered over to the freshly cut grass and laid down to enjoy a little snooze. I hadn't been laying there more than 10 minutes when I received a phone call from my mom. My mother was in a panic. Isaac, go. He's at Craner Field. He's been hit by a car. I was a little unconscious, but managed to stand up quickly and drive the half mile to the softball diamonds where emergency medical technicians were already doing CPR on him. He hadn't been hit by a car. He had had a cardiac arrest. My body was in shock as they hoisted him into the back of the ambulance. My dad looked at both of the EMTs that were there and asked if either of them held the Melchizedek priesthood. And when neither of them answered, Isaac's grandfather laid his hands on his grandson anointed his head with holy consecrated oil, and then commanded him in the name of Jesus Christ that his body be able to function again. It was about 15 minutes later when the doctor in the ER department was able to get a heartbeat back again. After a life flight and four days in the ICU at Primary Children's, the neurologist and cardiologist told us that he was in pretty bad shape and that if we loved him, we'd let him go. We did love him, so we did let him go. Of course, I miss that little man like crazy, but it wasn't a hard decision to let him go back home. I know why he and I are here. I know the earth was created for the purpose of spirit and physical bodies coming together to learn and prove herewith, to see if we will do all things which God commands. When we leave this mortal existence, our spirits are still intact. Existence doesn't stop with mortality. It's infinite. Since Isaac's passing, I have felt and recognized his presence in my life. In circumstances that are just too sacred to share, I know that he is happy and that he wants me to be happy. I know that he wants his dad, who left when he was three and a half years old, and his stepmom to be happy. Sacred experiences were sprinkled throughout our community with his cross country and ballroom dance teammates, amongst his friends, family, neighbors, ward members, and even those who never met him in this life. The year following his death was a sacred and holy year for me, 
and in the midst of it, I also was introduced to a man who lost his wife just one month after Isaac passed away. He's striving to live worthy of the greatest blessings heaven has to give. I acquired four children when I married Kirk who are teaching me essential character traits for heaven. I am blessed and I am stressed. Men are meant to have joy and opposition no matter the circumstance. When my son was just five years old, he gave a talk in primary about the greatest gift that we've been given. Uh, uh, <coughs> um, at Christmas time, um, I give presents and get presents. Some are big, some are small. But the best present is, is Jesus. Jesus is perfect. He did everything. Oh. He did everything what he wanted to do. No, but... He did everything what Heavenly Father wanted him to do. Guess what, Mom? I have a tummy ache. Okay, we'll fix it here in a minute. <laughs> and at, as, even when it is hard, sometimes I do hard things too. Even my mom does. <laughs> and I got a song about it. I can do it. Yes, I can. I will do it. Yes, I will. My heavenly father knows I can. So I will. Then what? I am grateful. I'm grateful for Jesus. Because of him. What? Because of him. Because of him. Of him. We can do all things. We can do all things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you! <laughs> okay. Why would we be exempt from doing hard things when the Savior of the world was asked to do and carried out hard things on behalf of the rest of us imperfect mortal human beings? I stay because of the example of Jesus Christ who stayed during the most difficult time ever endured on this earth. Christ endured our pains and infirmities, the emotional and mental turmoil most of today's population endures each day, sins of every and all kind. He stayed so that we might return. Christ proved that after enduring hard things, we can rise again. The resurrection on the third day means I get to see Isaac again that my husband Kirk and his children get to see their wife and mother again, that we'll have bodies that are perfect, capable of receiving fullness of joy. President Russell M. Nelson said that the Lord loves effort and that effort brings rewards. Well, I stay so that he can make me more than I am. A friend recently shared with me how being in complete darkness makes her feel claustrophobic. It's strange because whether it's light or dark has nothing to do with the respiratory system, or does it? There have been moments in my life that were emotionally claustrophobic, where I needed light in the midst of mental darkness. Whether it was the months and years following divorce, navigating depression and anxiety when my world didn't turn out quite like I had imagined, sharing my only son with his father and stepmother, being single when my heart longed for marriage and family, losing my son to a cardiac arrest at the age of 13, or feeling like an outsider after marrying and joining a new family, I have felt darkness. Why then don't I just throw in the towel and tell God I am tired of being uncomfortable? I don't believe we were born on this earth to drink pina coladas all day. I believe like everything on this earth, from the Grand Canyon to rolling tides to seedlings to brand new babies, we were meant to change, develop, learn, and improve. Robert D. Hales said that true disciples of Christ see opportunities in the midst of opposition. I believe that the family and set of circumstances I was given are for me to learn, grow, change. To feel the light of Jesus Christ that we're offered when we do change and become like Him.